So as uh, you guys met up on the road, you and uh, uh, Captain Lucius and Frappuccino came to a town. Um, as you're coming up the road, you kind of met these uh, one drunken fool um, that had a druid with them. Um, an older guy who was dying and a uh, not really a servant, more like a, a friend of the Lord who was trying to help his drunk friend up. Um, he helped him up to the room. The butler ended up dying. Uh, Glimon, uh, Shadow was resurrected from his body. You guys fought it, killed it, vanished it. Yeah, the guy killed me first. Well, it just knocked you out. You know, just things happen. Right. Um, it also strength drained you a little bit, so you were tired and you curled up on the bed with your blanking and stepped on the Lord and <laughs> basically crashed in his bed right. overnight. <laughs> you guys woke up the next morning, traveled to uh, Silverlight Manor, and were attacked by some bandits who you managed to intimidate and scare some away and get rid of the rest of them. Well, they didn't realize who they were fucking with. That's true. You guys uh, continued on, got to the manor, checked the basement out, um, came up, found out there was a vault down there. Um, there was a bunch of rooms down there. You didn't necessarily find anything of real importance, um, other than that it used to be kind of a prison that had been refurbished into servants' quarters and guest rooms, stuff like that. Um, didn't necessarily find anything worth uh, taking. Uh, you made a deal with the lords to go ahead and try and find out, vanquish anything that is happening here in the manor um, because he believes that Holy Oaks basically killed his father and possibly killed the butler, but Raba who was able to get a last few words from Glimon the butler before he died said that he told Raba that there's proof in the matter which that's why you guys are here trying to find some proof of or proof of the dru druid's innocence right so you guys started out in the basement you went up um, you decided just to shoot right straight up to the roof you made some uh, some uh, death dogs that were guardians um, you get a general sense that since you've been in this mansion, it has very unnaturally been cursed in some way, shape, or form. There's a, there's a weird mist and a fog that surrounds it. Um, it just has a real eerie feeling. It doesn't, it's not like your typical lord mansion where, you know, everything's lavish and you have servants who wait on you hand and foot. Um, it's been it's been turned by something you're not sure what. Uh, you guys know from conversation that there was a deal made with Rock Seeker, uh, the Rock Seeker brothers who are dwarves, miners, explorers. They made a deal to trade with um, the Lord's Father for gems. They set the trade route up and everything was going good. This unknown sorceress decided to come and make another deal with the Lord, which he took. Unfortunately, um, Holy Oaks got wind of this from her trying to find her background story of her people. And she stumbled across that fact that the sorceress was actually taking the gems and trying to turn people into undead in this entire silver, silver light area. So she went and tried wow. to tell the uh, the lord of this area and he canceled the deal. And then mysteriously after that is when he died. But unfortunately, Holy Oaks was there, last person to more or less speak to the um, lord of the area before he died. So unbeknownst to her, as she started walking around the area, she started hearing whispers and people 
disappointing and she was kind of exiled from Silverlight because they were gonna basically hunt her down you know lynch mob her and tie her up because they thought that she killed the Lord so that's when Glimmon her and Glimmon left the town to go to uh, Van Bergen to find uh, various to tell him that there is proof the Dru Druid didn't do it. There's actually a sorceress behind all this, but it's unknown who she is, where she's from, or anything like that. So that's why you guys are here. You're trying to find out what the whole story is, and Holyoke is trying to follow clues to find out what happened to her people from it being raided by orcs in uh, the Fate Wild. Pretty cool. So the um, initial uh, lord, the one who got killed, uh, he he believed or he knew Nemu Holyoaks and believed her. You know, not that she did anything bad, but he uh, confided in her, kind of thing, or what? Yes, uh, because he had a good deal going with the Rock Seekers, and the sorceress came in and kind of undermined him with a better deal offer, but. He always kind of had a sense that something was up, and if you know, Holy Oaks basically confirmed that by saying, "What she is doing is taking those soul gems that you guys are trading, uh, and taking them with her." And her the plot was eventually to uh, turn everybody into Silverlight into her undead servants, <clears throat> and there might be some more proof of that in here because there was. There was rumor also that Holyoaks knows that there might be a letter from some priest that was sent to the Lord that between that and between Holyoaks telling them that's what the sorceress is up to is when he canceled the deal with her. So. Okay. Awesome. Alright, so you guys, uh, when you, the night before you uh, had a dealing with some dogs, Upstairs got some uh, got wounded pretty bad um, knocked you guys down unconscious <laughs> um, <laughs> Fortunately, there was a uh, holy symbol on the door that kept him at bay and They couldn't cross the threshold of that door um, the next You guys limp downstairs you end up crashing in uh, the Lord's room First floor. Do we hear the dogs throughout the night? <clears throat> Every once in a while, but they they eventually calmed down because you ended up wounding one of them pretty good, and he kind of retreated and started licking his wounds and trying to pull arrows and stuff. Out of him, so. Right. And there's also, what, three dead orcs. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to go under the assumption they're still not in here, that you just kind of dragged them over into the uh, room next to you so you could sleep peacefully. Right. So I didn't get to show you guys the essential ring that was on. Buries his finger. This is the family crest of what he keeps twisting around his finger that was given to him. That Glim was brought cool. with him, actually. Nice. So, do we need that to get in rooms or to get nah. around the castle? Kind of thing? That is just. Just for reference, just so you know what the crest looks like, in case you see it again. Right. So you guys had a long, good night's rest, and leveled up. And it's early morning, the next morning, and you guys have woken up in this room. 
what you want to do. A little, a little leaner and a little meaner. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, go out and let's leave the dogs alone today. Yeah, let's not let them out. <laughs> and uh, is it nighttime right now, or is, is it daytime? No, nope, early morning. You guys had a good night's rest, and you woke up in the morning, so you have uh, you can see daylight. More coming through the top portion of the manor. Because the map so much... is still black and whatnot. Yes, that's for line of sight. Everything else is, uh, once you start moving around, you'll be able to see through. Uh, the sun is shining in through you windows. Do, God damn it. Okay, so, yes. That's your line of sight. Because you can't see through walls and such. Um. This is basically daylight. The streams that you're seeing are from daylight. All right, well, I'm gonna take a step out there. We should check out this area down here. The moon glow gardens or something? <clears throat> Just to get a sense of where you guys are at, you're on the first floor, not the ground floor, but the first floor. Gotcha. So if we go over that edge, we're falling down into the... Yes. On the grass and tree right there. Not like that. Yeah, it's about a 15 foot drop down into the gardens. Wow, okay. Like I said, the gardens are, you know, they're very nice. Uh, there's actually a waterfall in here. Um, you see a, a gargoyle statue that's over here. The trees and everything is very nicely manicured everywhere. And then it's, you know, it's like a big, huge skylight that goes straight up through the mansion. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to start walking down here, um, you know, stealthily. <clears throat> Keep my eyes open and my crossbow in the hand, okay? You guys are more than welcome to join me. They're girls, man. They gotta get ready. They're girls, man. They gotta get ready. Do hair. Stuff. Okay. <laughs> Prep and prim their... Oh, she, she, hasn't, she hasn't found her thing yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show her something on the screen, guys. I wanna Okay, yeah. Just uh, show her the, the map shrinkage up top. Or you can hit alt and roll your mouse and it will shrink. Or grow. Do you see your scimitar anymore? No, I have Okay. 
Okay. And Rob is coming too, right? But. Yeah, Rava says he'll keep up the rear. He's got a pretty good perception and make sure nobody sneaks up on you. Are these windows here? Yeah, they just outlook. Um, it is still pretty misty outside. You can't really see too far past uh, about 20, 30 feet. You can tell the sun's up, but right. it's not really you know bright, sunlit, shiny, sunshiny day. <laughs> Right, because um, I'm I'll be peering in the windows when I go up to them. You know what I mean? Right there, into the room. Is that something I can do? Yeah, these uh, just the map shows that it's overlooking <clears throat> something, but it's essentially a uh, more more or less. You're looking out over. A ground level roof. Also, I can't. It's not room. That room there is invisible. It's not a window looking into that room. Correct. Okay. So there are no other doors or anything like that to get out of here. Besides where you guys came in, no. Gotcha. <clears throat> I've removed uh, some stuff on the map, make it easier for you guys to move around where you have been. So the doors that you can move through is places oh, cool. where you've been. So I guess we'll just go back in this way and because uh, that's that's really the whole top level right there, right? Or ground one. Not ground, but level one. Yes. Yeah, when you guys came up from the basement and then through the doors to the entryway, you came straight up the stairs, went through here, went through the garden, and then went basically right. straight through and up. And the dogs were one level up from this, right? That was a room, that was one, like a tower. Yeah. So it goes basement, ground, level one, tower? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to go in here, um, you know, stealthily again. These are like those giant urns, right? Bases and urns. <clears throat> yeah, and artwork that's on the walls. Is this a door over right here? Yeah, as you're walking over towards here, you see two doors to your north. Um, one's right there, and then there's another one over here. I'm going to look over at uh, Frappuccino and nod at the door. Okay, see, so check it out. Well, you get it. I'm not in the room. I'm just kind of, I'm at the door. But, uh, right. I'm gonna it, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to check the door and see if it opens, Joe. Okay, it opens right up. Yeah, 
a second. Okay. So right as you enter, I need you to make a, no. um, you see a bed that <laughs> looks like it was uh, <laughs> slept the night before. Um, not this night before, but apparently before the night of supposed horrific events that happened about a week ago. Um, right. Yeah, not last night, but prior to you guys getting here. Anyway, um, so when the 44 Roberts were knocking at the door. Yeah. works maybe who knows um you get there's some personal effects <clears throat> that lay hanging or that are placed around the room and if you want to search around in here go ahead right. and make a investigation check yeah i'm gonna go to that desk I'm not on it but i'm standing in front of it So you hop up on the desk and you dance, apparently. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Do the river dance up on the table. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, is not nearly as an exciting show as one would think. <laughs> you know, how about if you have a guy who's tall and he sits in front of you? and you can't see the people's feet. It just looks like a bunch of people in a line, doesn't it? They're just all, they're, yeah, their feet are moving a million miles an hour. Every once in a while, throwing their head to the side. Yeah. Uh, kind of see. So nothing in here. At the foot of the bed, there's a trunk. Looks like a traveler's trunk. Um, appears to be locked. And other than that, the book looks like a uh, a journal, but it looks like there's a couple of pages ripped out of it, and there's no other writing in it. Okay. Let's see if we can pick the lock. Absolutely. Ah, your king gets it open, and inside the lock or inside the chest, like I said, it's a traveler's trunk. You find some uh, fine clothing in there. Um, some traveling clothing, a pair of leather boots, a uh, personal grooming kit, and a silver dagger. Ooh. What size are the boots? Are they males or females? They're for halflings. <laughs> I'll just copy paste that in that uh, in that file there, okay? The page. Yep. Fat loots. Okay, we. They haven't encountered a halfling before, just the elf and the orcs and the lord was human, so was the butler? The butler was human. The butler was human. Yeah, you haven't encountered any uh, halflings other than maybe seeing one passing by or something in uh, Van Bergen or in Silverlight, but you haven't seen any here or like directly dealt with anyone that's a halfling. Any markings, anything on the dagger, make it anything other than financially valuable? No, just a nice uh, silver dagger. So it's a silver dagger, yet you say 35 gold. Hmm. Just kidding. It's a very finely made silver dagger. I'm just kidding. Nice, man. Nothing under the bed. And some silver dagger. 
<laughs> it's in like could be imbued with magical. It could be imbued with magical, or it could help you with things that are don't like silver. Fighting, right? Like remember, Horbath did all this shit to silver. Wolfrap, do you want to hold that thing? But the priest does hold it, not the demon. Oh, that's right. You're a demon. <laughs> Thanks. I'll carry it. She only half. Okay, we're gonna go. Right. I'm gonna go out, uh, out exit this room and go towards the other door. Okay. Door unlocked as well. It is. I'm gonna open it up. All right, as you open it up, uh, you notice that this room, although small, in the same size as the other one, um, it is has better views. Um, you didn't notice really any windows in the other room. This one has some nice rooms that will overlook, or windows that overlook the uh, outside if it wasn't so foggy and misty out. Um, it's also decorated right. with fine fabrics. Um, everything from the curtains to the beds is uh, very richly decorated. And there's also another log or another book on there. Let me open this door for you so you can get the hell in there. Yeah, we're all clamoring. We're like the stooges at the door. Spread out. All right, you can make an investigation check in here. Um, with that, you notice right on the, uh, the log or the log book is very finely leather bound and it uh, has the name Various on it. Oh, uh, okay. Various Baelstrom. Let us flip a few pages. It's uh, bacon. <laughs> there's nothing. It doesn't look like anything's been ripped out of it, but there's nothing written in it. Nothing under the bed? Any? <clears throat> no, no boogeyman, no boots, no nothing. And actually, it looks like, I mean, there's no traveling trunk in here. It looks like somebody, you know, it's, it's, the bed's made. Um, looks like somebody hasn't really been in here in a, in a little while. And whatever was in here with that uh, 23 investigation check, you gather that, probably packed everything up, took it with him when he went to Van Bergen. Right. And we can see nothing out the windows, of course, because it's the uh, fog. Why not? Right. All right, I'm going to step back into the uh, hallway. All right, there's nothing in that big red pot. Yeah. Okay. 
Alright, so I'm gonna Is there a library? Was there a library on this floor or was that in the upper floor? He's thinking. I don't think you guys found the library. No, we didn't. Maybe it was just an art gallery. And then the study. And Colonel Mustard. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go towards the, uh, the southern hall, okay, down there. Uh, these doors are open, that's why we can like, see him. Yeah, they're both open. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to peek in this first one here, okay? Alright, the bedroom looks unused, and a uh, fine layer of dust has covered most of it. Uh, the curtains are pulled, and the bed is stripped with blankets and sheets folded upon it. Alright. I'm just going to move on, unless you guys want to check it out. Just an empty room. Yeah, you can make an investigation check. Too. Sure, why not? Practice the rolling. Yeah, it just uh, appears to ha has not been used in a lot, long time. There's a thick layer of dust on furniture, so has it been used? Nothing in it. How about here, Joe? Similar? Yes, it's kind of similar. Um, the bedroom looks unused as well. Uh, there's also some more dust on it. There's not really much in here. The cupboards are empty. There's, I mean, these are basically set up. You would guess that they're for guest rooms if somebody were to come stay here. She, she's going to do an investigation check. I just wanted her to see where the thing is and kind of get used to it. Hurry up, hit the button! kind of figure the same thing out. You just kind of put your hands across right. the door and go, it's dusty in here. <laughs> so it's basically like a Hotel 6. Motel 6. So nothing in there? Nope. All right, let's okay. go. So this is a, this is the whole uh, level one. Correct. Shall we go down? Down we go. Alright guys, when I move you down on the map, it might help to zoom out, let it load, and then you can zoom in. Okay.
Alright. Okay. So these are the stairs down. And then uh, we have doors now. And refresh our memory, you had told us what the north and south doors were, but I forget. <clears throat> yeah, Robo basically kind of pointed them out as you guys were rushing upstairs and what they were. Um, the two, well, <laughs> the one door is ahead of you, uh, right above, directly north of you. Um, you remember he told you that was the estate office. Let's check the estate office. What do you think? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm there. Is the door unlocked? Yes. So who's opening it? I love it. <laughs> Alright, make a stealth check. Alright. So with that roll, kind of stealthily open the door and see what appeared to be creakety crackety skeletal jerking humanoids with their backs facing you right now. Uh, they're just kind of clickety clacking wow. inside this room. Um, they faintly kind of clack their heads to the left and to the right when you enter, but they don't they notice you per se. Gotcha. Ow. So can I kind of sneak in on just around the door just to get a little better perspective? Yeah, just make a stealth check as you enter. Yep, you just curl your tail around your leg and slither around. It. <laughs> well, I can get the guy on the right. A shot first. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna shoot. Yeah, you and Frappuccino get free attacks. Okay, I'm gonna crossbow. Okay. So Joe, I get a crossbow and then I do a sneak attack. Is that how I do it? Sneak attack, you don't get. Not yet. You gotta wait till you have a friend that's in combat range. 
Get a free attack because you surprised him. Right. Shit. All right, as you that bolt tinks off the back of the armor of the skeleton, and slowly it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go that for that one. Longbow. All right, that arrow sticks into it. Slow turn with an arrow sticking out of him to face you. No emotion, no cry out pain. It's just like thunk and then just slowly turn. Hold on a second, I'm going to show uh, Nancy no, something. Okay, never mind. Okay, we're back. Okay. That's basically, you guys got two free attacks when you stealthed in, and now we'll roll initiative for everybody. Gotcha. It's right under the normal button. It's initiative. Uh, yeah, that one. Ever click? There you go. She, she clicked on her. herself. She didn't click on her token. Right, baby, I told you to click. <laughs> Brian's all, baby, I told you to. <laughs> Another one bites the dust just came up on the playlist. Just saying. Perfect. Yes. All right. Okay. You know you're up. Yeah, so that arrow tinks it. all that good lunch I had. Yeah. And that the bones just shatter and fall to the ground and spread out across the room, and he is gone. Wow. I'm going to shoot my guy. Are you going to move, uh, Frap? Yeah, I'm going to 
Try to move so I get a little bit better angle between the two of these, just in case. Alright, we should... And very nice! Yeah. I forgot to click on my click button that you gave me, Joe. I use my other <laughs> Sure. See? See? Yeah, I'm just not used to it, that's all. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get it, you know, just so you guys get used to clicking your tokens all the time, because it's, it's handy. Yeah, I clicked the token, but I didn't use the little quick, uh, the, what do you call it? Oh, I the, see. So you just ignore that you the gifts I tried to. The gifts, yes, I, I poo-pooed on that, <laughs> but I did do it right. <laughs> All right, so that bolt hits it very right in the eyeball. So it's just got a basically a crossbow bolt sticking out of its eye, but it's still alive and cracking its jaw at you. Nice. So you can move or, yeah, you can move. I'm going to stay right there. So we're gonna stare or they're on now. I'm getting my food. Okay. Hey, wait, hold on a sec, guys. I gotta you have these are right here Beho has the new toys now and just laying on trying to bite on them and Yeah I didn't figure it'd take long for her to knock all them down. Power beasts. Where are the NPCs? Where are the NPCs? Good grief. So Raba runs in and tries to finish off this wounded one, but he tinks it. The skeleton reflectively just kind of drop blocks his blow with his sword. Hey Joe, hold on a second. We're, we're, I'm just trying to get her in the room, right? Is it her turn yet, or is it? It's not even her turn yet, is it? Um, no. It will be in two more turns. What's going on now? The skeleton moved up. Uh, Rabo tried to go in and finish off the one that you bolted in the eyeball, but uh, All right. he blocked his move. The skeleton moved up since you're the one that did the damage to him and took a short sword swing at you and missed. Okay. And now it's uh, Howie's turn. 
she doesn't get yet why she can't see inside the room. And I was telling her to move Nemo inside the room. So I'm going to do that. Go on just a second, guys. And it's gonna be hard playing on the laptop. Cause you ain't got a mouse, it's hard to move across the screen. Huh? Is Joe there? No. No. Hey, Nigga, do you think the silver dagger will work on the skeletons? I, mean, I know it'll work on it, but will it be more effective than, say, a scimitar? I don't think it's going to have nearly the damage power, um, but I don't think they're unholy enough. Well, I'm going to hit it with my scimitar. I'd go for that. And go ahead and, yeah, go ahead and do it while he's out, because he'll just catch it when he comes back in. I think he just went to get a beer and smoke a cigarette real quick. So click on... No, 
Dance, you're up. What you gonna do? You got skeletons. Kill some. Functionality issues with uh -huh. my the screen and now my chat box, and so yes. I'm I'm working it. Sorry, guys. It <laughs> sounds just like you. <laughs> sounds just like your first night. You got a mouse for your laptop? Yeah, and I'm trying to use it, and somehow my character box got shrunk down to just like a title, and we're trying to expand the box by dragging it to make it bigger again, and it won't. It just keeps sliding around the um, game board. So basically, I can't access my character. Right. I don't know. Um, uh, Nikki had the same problem. I'm not sure how she got it back. I don't know. You could probably reconnect, log out, log back in. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to try that because it's just we can't shrink it the right way and we're probably going to start having a fight. I just hit refresh F5. <laughs> He's getting so annoyed. Okay. I'm gonna be right back. Or just hit F5 for to refresh it. If it doesn't work, then log all the way out back in. Then shit, that works first. And then the other suggestion I could make is invent because I think that is the issue. Make your go into your settings and change your um, your key for when you talk. Your push to talk key to another button, like maybe the plus sign or the key enter or something. One of those, but it will make a sound if you don't have it on the control. It'll make like a little chime when you use it, but it's not that big of a deal. Please we'll know what you something. So change it from my control? Yeah, because you probably got it defaulted it's your left control. And if you try and hold your left control and talk and hit your mouse, it'll screw the screen up. It'll shrink and all that. Yeah, because that keeps happening. I'm having a terrible time like, finding where I'm even at because the screen is going all sizes and stuff. So that's that's what I would do. I'd just change the uh, change your uh, push to talk key to some other key. Uh, Brian, turn your camera on. God damn it! I want to see what this machine can handle. Yeah, screw the rest of your shit. You're mine. <laughs> you know what? So see if your camera will go on so I can see if this, so I can test the rig. Unless it slows down and bogs you guys down, then no, screw it. Good grief. Fucking out. <sighs> so 
So you go that, you come back on, swinging, and you kill that freaking skeleton. Nice. And again, as you swing and hit it with your scimitar, it kind of almost unnaturally blows the bones all across the uh, the room, and the armor just kind of drops. Nice. Joe, can you see me? I can. Okay. All right. Fuck. Turn it off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, baby. Now he's trying to be nice again. <laughs> you can still move, right? Oh, it's still my turn? She can still move, right, Joe? Because she moved in. Yes, she moved in, attacked, and she has a little bit of movement left. She only moved in, like, five oh. feet, so she can move up to 30. But she can't attack again. She can do a bonus action of healing, but I don't think anybody's been hit. Unless she wants to try and heal a skeleton, yeah. which I don't think she wants to. Heal the skeleton, honey. Make a friend. You have to go there. Oh, okay. You just I'm do. just trying to look around the room. Oh, there's your skeleton right there. Is your, is, your, is your screen all blurry in there? No. Because I only see, like, um, I don't know, go see, like, I don't see anything yeah. soft. Yeah, you'll have to. This is where shrinking the screen comes in handy. Um, that little blue folder that's on the top, if you drop that down, or the little bar, you can zoom in and out on that. This map's big, so it takes a while to load, and it, just because it messes up the browser and because it's a Windows and a PC. <laughs> yep, that. But it helps on these big maps if you start out with it zoomed all the way out and then zoom in to where you can see. It just takes a bit for the map to load. Hi, right, Did you hear that, Joe? So she's. She's good. We can still go up for a second. So now the skeleton creaks up next to you, raises a sharp sword up, and takes a swing at you. Um, you tell me what your armor class is. I think it's 13, so I don't think that'll hit you. React by block. Her armor class. Yes, yeah, so she reflectively just kind of knocks the short sword attack away with her stick. And that misses. She's dead. And grab Gino, you're up. Top of the order. just smash the shit out of something. There you go! That usually works when you do that. I think... That, would, that almost sounded like it was set up, man. I know. Wait a minute. <laughs> Those guys are, are loaded. Yeah, she bought the app for loaded dice. So yeah, Sorry, you Google Play Store only. With that scimitar and that is a short sword, sorry. Keep forgetting you don't have a little pirate's freaking sword. And you crack it, it gets through, but it's you know, it's a skeleton, so even though it was a perfect thrust, it uh, goes through the Bones, chips, breaks a few rib bones, and it uh, 
really cry out in pain or anything like that. It just stands there as you see some broken bones hit the floor from where you hit it. Lucian, you're up. Okay. I'm just gonna go there and, and uh, rapier him. I'm gonna rapier him. You, I just want to use my sneak attack. <laughs> you gotta hit first. Okay. That does hit. Regular attack, he has one hit point left, and that sneak attack blows him apart across the room. Yay! Right on. That we are out of combat. So the business affairs of uh, Silverlight Estate were conducted from this formal office. The estate manager, uh, uh, manager's massive and imposing desk, <laughs> is uh, central to the room. With various files, papers, and maps adorn the office. Uh, another silverlight golden urn is in here as well, placed in one corner, and in the other, a well-kept shrubbery in a pot. Um, and that's about it, if you want to make some checks in here. Let's check. So with those, uh, um, how many times are you going to roll investigation, man? Well, no, it was, the last one was uh, Nimu. I'm says, rolling for her because she uh, had to take noodles out. I know. Remember it does that? Yes. Are the you first, still in control of her? first one was me and the last one was me. Right now I am because she's Max has to go poop. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good dinner, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So with those uh, those roles, you basically see. I mean, this is an office. This is a manager's office. Um, the map on the walls from or is behind a nice. Uh, it's framed. It's a map of the Silverlight Estate. Um, there's also next to it um, blueprints of the estate. You know, just, they're proud of their estate. Uh, there's a letter on the desk as well. Um, this letter it seems to be written from a Augustus Britton. Um, Nemo knows that that is the uh, letter that the Lord received from this the cleric that she uh, the Lord told. Let me rephrase that. The Lord told Nemo that the letter that he received from the cleric. Um, this would be that letter. Right. Lord Eldon is the father that was killed. Okay. And there it is.
So, um, perhaps Rava should hold this because he'll be, you know, he's the one who's known and trusted here, right? I think that's a good idea. Did Joe leave? No. Nah, no. Whoops. No, nah, I'm still here. That's the vault. Um... As you, you just walked in. As you give Rob the uh yeah. Hey Joe, can I get tell Nancy what happened? Unless you want to keep it no. a secret. <laughs> well she was there. <laughs> what? Well I was like Well, it's best that Rafa holds it because uh, you're the one who's still under suspicion. She goes, why? <laughs> All right, and as you hand that uh, letter and he peruses it, um, he pulls out of his uh, <clears throat> coat a page from when you guys were down in the basement looking at that login book. kind of shows that to you and he goes well this is starting to make more and more sense oh yeah we have a letter from and a does he know these other two people yeah we have a letter from a cleric with uh, a warning on it that they need to talk. We have the visitors where this Madame Miranda arrives at the fifth hour of noon and never signs out. And this was the day right. that uh, Lord Eldon was killed. There has to be one more piece that we're missing in here. And we'll tie everything together. Well, looks like it's going back to the death docks. Just kidding. I think my mom called. I have to go home for dinner. <laughs> but we can go back to the study that was before the tower. Yeah. Should we just, uh, since we're on this floor, do you want to just clear the rest of these rooms? He also knows when you guys kill these skeletons amongst their bursting bones and armor falling, you notice that they all were wearing these weird uh, amulets around their neck. So these guys were, just until recently, were alive? Or were these dug out of a, a grave site? You're not too sure. Um, Rava basically says that these uh, they wear clothing of the, uh, um, the manor guards. But, and they have the amulets of them, but he doesn't, obviously, he does, I don't recognize the weird bones. Right. So would these uh, amulets be uh, from the rock seekers? Uh, the make, make a history check. History.
Alright, this amulet. Uh, from stories and such, you can tell that uh, the amulet kind of belongs to members that were part of the Silent Sea. Um, you've heard stories about that from what you can remember. You know that the amulet is involved with uh, members from the Silent Sea, and that's about all you know at this point. Are you taking notes? No, I'm doodling. <laughs> I'm taking notes, Joe. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm taking notes. Can we take the amulets? You can. You just don't wear them. They're just on the floor. <laughs> Alright, so we'll just add that to the pouch, huh? Anything else in here of any value investigation, stealthiness, perceptiveness, checkish? Nope, with those rolls, that's what you found in here. Okay, so if we rolled better, would we find more? Uh, probably not. All right, then. 